Hello and welcome. This time we want to discuss about transferring a measurement value to another place. Yeah? We know there is this measurement chain. Yeah? We know there is the sensor at the beginning. And we know there is the amplifier. There is the amplifier. And there is some or are some devices which do process. Yeah. Maybe this place maybe data storage or whatever yeah and in between in between here everywhere the measurement information needs to be transferred okay? so this is not just getting information from place of measurement to somewhere else it's a little bit more I have always to transfer information from one step to the next yeah? a very easy a very easy thing is if we would do it would do it like this so this here should be the measured value yeah and here this is the time the other end we have the time yeah and I mean what would be mm, what would be easy to have a curve that the current the current strength or the current height of the curve yeah is representing the measurement value so if this is a high measurement it's a high it's a high level yeah if this is a low measurement, it's a lower level. Yeah? Low level. Yeah? This means something is analog to the measured value. So this thing here is analog, yeah? an analog signal, and this is amplitude analog. The amplitude, yeah? amplitude of the signal reflects the measured value. Yeah, so this is amplitude analog. Okay, this is a very common thing. Okay, amplitude analog. Then, then we could use something like this. Here's again the time, and we will also want to refer, transfer the x. And here we can have a short value, and this would be a longer measurement value. Here the maximum is exactly the same. Okay, what is different? is here the time t1 and that's the time t2 yeah so this time the time is analog to the measured signal this here is so-called time analog okay this here is time analog and then we could think of something like this there's again time t and again we do have x yeah? then if we're having low measurement we have a swing like this low measurement and if we have a high measurement we have a frequency like this yeah? this is called 
So the analog, uh, some element or some value of the signal is analog to the measurement equipment. This is frequency analog. Okay? These are analog signals. Uh, all right here. Analog. Uh, these are analog signals. All of these are analog signals. Now let's come to the advantages and disadvantages. This here, the amplitude analog, yeah, it's obvious a very simple signal. Yeah. It can reach high resolution. Yeah, so we do have high resolution. And we have an effect which is I can tell the measurement value at every point in time. It does not really matter at which point in time I look at my signal, yeah, I can tell it. Yeah. So this is time continuous. Continuous is this correct? Yeah, continuous. Time continuous. Yeah. Time continuous signal. This is the advantage of this signal. Yeah. The disadvantage is if I if something is disturbing the signal, then it's rather easy to disturb or to, to destroy or or yeah disturb the amplitude. So the amplitude, the amplitude here, this is easy, easy to disturb. Yeah. easy to disturb and if I want to separate here if I want to have a galvanic insulation in between somewhere this is not very easy with uh, amplitude and anal analog signals yeah galvanic insulation not easy yeah, it can be easily disturbed and the galvanic insulation, the galvanic separation of two things is not easy. Yeah. And if I want to read it into a computer, yeah, if you want to digitize it, yeah, this is hard to digitize. I need an analog digital converter, an ADC is needed. To digitize the signal. Okay, these are the disadvantages. These are the advantages of the signal. So time continues. This is something you have to you have to uh, remember. Yeah, time continues means at every point in time. The signal can be evaluated. Here. Yeah. At every point in time the signal can be ev evaluated. Now let's come to the time analog signal. Yeah. Here we have to wait. We have we are starting to watch here. Yeah. And soon as at this point in time we know what the value is. So this is not time continuous that's time discrete this signal this signal is time discrete yeah? so that's that's a minus point here so it's time discrete i don't know at any point in time what was the signal yeah? because from here to here something could have changed yeah? i don't get it because it's not distributed fast enough Okay. Advantage. Yeah. Even in case the amplitude is a little bit disturbed, yeah, the time can be measured rather easy. Yeah. So it's hard to disturb. It's a solid signal. Yeah. 
Also, the galvanic insulation is easy because I just need think of an optocoupler. An optocoupler is a device which is turning on the lamp, and on the other side there is there is a phototransistor. If you turn on the lamp, the phototransistor will switch. If you turn off the lamp, the phototransistor will turn off. So, and there is no conductive uh, connection between those two parts. So the galvanic insulation is easy. easy. Galvanic insulation is easy, very easy. Yeah? And also, the transfer in the computer to digi digitize is very easy. I just need a counter. I, I'm counting, let's say I have a frequency of 1 megahertz, yeah? then I'm counting up with 1 megahertz, and where I stop counting, this is my digital value. Yeah? Then I have a resolution of 1 microseconds. So I just have to start count here, count with a certain frequency, stop count here, and if I count longer, I have a higher value. That's exactly what it means to digitize. Come from a value to a number. Okay? So easy to digitize. This is time analog. Frequency analog looks pretty much the same. Yeah? I need some time to determine the frequency. So it's again time discrete. Okay, this is the same time discrete value. Time discrete is disadvantage. Advantage, it's very hard to disturb. So it's hard to disturb. Yeah? The galvanic insulation is also easy because think of a think of a uh, capacitor, a capacitor for frequencies. It's nothing more than a resistor. Yeah. For direct current, it's a, a break wire break. Yeah. So it's galvanic insulated but frequencies can pass yeah? so it's working galvanic insulation is easy okay and now let's think about digitizing the signal it's very easy because I just have I open a time window yeah I wait and I just have to count how many times I pass zero and if I count low, if I have a low count, then I have a low frequency. If I have a high count, I have a high frequency. So this is very easy. So it's also easy to digitize. Okay. However, this signal is rather, rather widespread. Yeah really because it simply you can use your you can use your multimeter get in dig in open some screws measure the signal this can only be done here here and here i have to evaluate this thing but this thing here we know remember this there is a separate video about this yeah our measurement device, our distance sensor, ultrasonic distance sensor, the separate video about this, this gives back a time analog signal. Okay. And frequency analog signal, it's uh, in, in, in communications, it's very often used. Yeah? So I'm not sure if you have ever thought about what AM and FM means on your radio. So AM and FM. You can switch between AM and FM. AM means amplitude modulated yeah? and AFM means frequency modulated. Okay. If you turn on FM, most stations you will hear are FM. 
they sound like you played from mp3 cd they sound perfect yeah why because frequencies here also high frequency means loud noise low frequency means low noise there let's say yeah there's a little bit more complicated but basically that's it yeah and and this means uh, the frequency cannot be disturbed so it sounds very clear and if you switch to am yeah then it's high amplitude means loud low amplitude means silent this can be easily disturbed and this exactly sounds like it could be easily disturbed this sounds a little bit like you hold your 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 cell phone into a pot and listen to the loudspeaker yeah this is exactly reflecting this the thing here okay but all of these are analog signals okay some are time continuous some are time time discrete a second thing if these are analog signals they are also digital signals yeah? they are also digital signals and these digital signals well digital signals do do consist of information one information this is called a bit and a bit is either zero or one yeah and usually we do combine eight of these bits into one so-called byte yeah? and this is a series of eight bits bit seven bit six bit five bit four bit three bit 2, bit 1, and bit 0. So a byte does consist of does consist of 8 bits. Yeah. Each of it has a own value. Yeah. There is there is a separate video of how to call or get the get calculate the bit values yeah dual a numbering system yeah there's a separate video of this if you're interested watch it one of these bits is the least significant bit lsb and one of the bit is the most significant bit with the highest value okay that's a byte so i do transfer only zero and one signals yeah this i can do uh, in different ways there is then some some form representing some signal representing a zero yeah some signal representing a one which signals and how they look like they are called modulation modulation yeah. the modulation will modulate something on the on the line one type of modulation one type of signal is representing a zero and one type of modulation is represent, representing a one a very easy modulation we have learned at our arduino yeah there we said there we said a zero means zero volt and a one is five volt this was a very very easy type of modulation but we could also think about two different frequencies yeah two different frequencies one frequency is a zero and one frequency is a one this is for instance done in the so-called hard protocol we will talk about this yeah digital signals yeah. so the big advantage of these digital signals are yeah, advantage 
we can directly directly be processed by PLC or computer by some digital equipment simply. Yeah? The biggest disadvantage of digital signals are that they are discrete values. Discrete values, discrete values, yeah. There is no nothing between. This bit is either zero or one. There is nothing between discrete values. So there is a resolution. And I have steps. Yeah? And also a big disadvantage. A big disadvantage is, is that a small disturb, small small disturb can cause a lot of a lot of failure. So if only one bit is disturbed, this might cause a lot of failure. Yeah? So this thing has to be handled by the modulation that the modulation is doing something which can easily be not to be disturbed very easily. Yeah? But you see, if I change the most significant bit here, yeah, the, the, the measuring value would be off, far off. Okay? So that's the big disadvantage. However, this one kills it all. Uh, directly be processed by PLC, a computer. We are living in a digital world. Yeah? So our signals are more and more digital. Yeah? Digital communication is the communication this time. Yeah. Let's have a short, a short discussion about the coupling of two systems. Yeah. How they may coupled. Yeah. System one. System two. Easiest way to couple two systems is the galvanic coupling. Yeah. Just use two wires, one for the data, one for the ground, or whatever. Uh, just use wires to connect them. That's galvanic. Coupling. Galvanic coupling. Yeah? Usually they are grounded on only one side. Yeah? Even the shielding and so on. There is the shielding. Yeah. to prevent earth loops yeah. prevent earth loops advantage very simple disadvantage if my wires go out in the field somewhere yeah and then there is the thunderstorm and the big flash is coming here I will transfer this flash and the high voltage into my control room and will disturb or destroy there some control elements however, this is then galvanic coupling. Okay? Conductive. There's a conduction between those elements, electric electric conductant, galvanic coupling, usually twisted pair cables. Okay? One possibility. Another possibility. Other possibility is the inductive coupling. This is a transformator. Yeah? If there is alternating current, alternating signal coming, then the same signal is running here because they are magnetically coupled, these two things. Yeah. However, they are not they are isolated to each other. The electrons from here cannot jump over to here. So if here the flash is coming, it will then pull this up, but this one not. Okay? Just the data is transferred. Just the data is transferred. This is this coupling 
is called inductive. Inductive coupling. Okay. Then this is galvanic insulated. Then I would have the possibility make something like this. This is a capacity. Capacit capacitive capacitive coupling. The capacitor is just decoupling, galvanic decoupling this, but alternating current can pass over the capacitor, no issue. Yeah. Capacitive coupling. Yeah. And then there is the possibility Here's an LED. Yeah. And here's a phototransistor. Yeah. And in between, I have a light. Light. It's a light coupling. Okay, optic coupling. Optic coupling. This might be Lichtwellenleiter, yeah, fiber optics, fiber optic cable, might be kilometers or might be very close in one little element. Yeah. Important thing, galvanic isolated, okay, optic coupling. And then, last but not least, there is one possibility which is usually done if they're very far, 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 I have I mentioned far, yeah, far away things, yeah, so this is this. High frequency radio, radio coupling, radio coupling. Obvious, it's obvious that there is no galvanic, uh, galvanic combination, galvanic conductive that's isolated, yeah, and the data is transferred. I mean, that's basically a sender and that's a receiver, so it's like our radio, yeah, just we are receiving here data which is not, I don't know, which is not the latest hit, but is the measurement. This is usually done where quite some room needs to be, or length has to be covered. Yeah? So these are the possible ways of how to connect two things to each other. This time we talked about signals which are analog or digital. These are two, two things. Yeah. Then we said there is time continuous and time discrete. Yeah. Digital signal, by the way, is always time discrete yeah. because if there is a series of bit. I have to wait until the last bit is is processed and then I know the value. Time discrete. Digital signal always time discrete. Yeah? Time continuous. And just for the record, there is also there are signals which are which are deterministic. Yeah? Determined. Yeah? So we have determined signals. And we have stochastic signals. Yeah. Determined means they can be described somehow. There's some logic behind. Yeah. There's some logic behind. 
the signal, also the future, can be determined. Yeah. So there is some there is some logic logic behind the signal. This means determined. And here stochastic, this is just luck, noise, random. Random signal. Yeah. To measure a determined signal or to transfer a determined signal, it's much easier than to transfer a stochastic signal. Of course, yeah, because a stochastic signal can change extreme values. Yeah, a determined signal usually does not change too much. Yeah, so I can do separate uh, analysis on the signal that I say, okay, this cannot be. This measurement cannot be. I throw it away because this is for sure some pike, only some pike. Stochastic signals, I do. I cannot do this. Yeah, here I have to statistic methods. Okay, I have to do methods. Now you can read it less than before. Statistic methods. Okay, time continuous, yeah. signal, signal tells value at every single point in time, every microsecond, every nanosecond the signal is correct to the to the measured value. Time discrete here. Signal tells value only at specific points in time. Okay. And the analog, we've got this amplitude. Analog, we have got time analog, we have got the frequency analog, and digital, we got the bit and we got the byte transfer. Okay. That's basically the different signals which might be transferred. Next time we are talking about the parameters of the transfer. For this time, thank you very much for listening, goodbye.